Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Janine, and I will be your host for today's Storytelling Saturday. This 2021, we are commemorating the 500th anniversary of key events in the Philippines. The story touches on the importance of the, there are three things, the Magellan Elcano circumnavigation, the story of Lapu-Lapu during the Battle of Mactan, and the introduction of Christianity in the country. We will share this interesting story with you. It's called First Around the Globe, and this will be narrated by Kuya Sig Pecho and our sign language interpreter, Kuya Michael. The First Around the Globe, the story of Enrique. By Renny Rojas and Mark Singer. Pictures by Arnel Mirasol, published by Tahanan Books for Young Readers. What would you say if we told you that the first man to circle the earth was not a Spaniard or a Portuguese, but a Filipino named Enrique? Enrique was born on the island of Cebu. Like his fellow islanders, he might have lived and died without ever seeing much of the world that lay beyond the horizon. One day, while he was fishing, Enrique was kidnapped by a band of pirates. They took him to the island of Colo, where he was sold to the slave trade in Malapa. It was there that the young Cebuano first met Ferdinand Magellan. Magellan was a Portuguese explorer who lived in a time of adventure and discovery. He was working in Malacca, a Portuguese colony in the Malay Peninsula. Malacca was a trading port where goods and services were sold, including slaves. One day, at a slave auction, Magellan heard one of the slaves speaking a language he had never heard before. The young man told him that he came from a land that lay to the east beyond Saba. The explorer grew excited. He had only traveled as far as Saba. And now he dreamed of claiming this undiscovered place for Portugal. Magellan paid for the slave and the young man became his servant. He was baptized and given the Christian name, Enrique. In 1512, Magellan returned to Portugal. Enrique went with him. Magellan asked the Portuguese king to grant him the ships he needed to reach a place east of Saba and north of Molucas. He would claim the region in the name of the Portuguese Empire. But the Portuguese king ignored him. Magellan did not give up hope. Instead, he asked the king of Spain for help. He told the king that these islands would give Spain as much riches as the gold of Peru and the silver of Mexico. Magellan presented Enrique and a woman from Sumatra to the Spanish royal court. They were dressed in colorful native clothes. The Spanish king agreed to pay for the expedition. A year and a half later, Magellan and five ships called Caravels left the south of Spain for their long sea journey. This is a map and it was created by Abraham Ortelius in the year 1570. You can see here Magellan's ship called the Victoria. Enrique went along as interpreter. Before leaving Seville, Magellan made out his will in which he wrote, I declare and ordain that the day of my death fence forward forever my captured slave Enrique, of the age of 26 years, more or less, shall be free. A 
as soon as the sea voyage began, there was trouble. Uh oh, what do you think happened? Some of the Spanish officers mutinied against the Portuguese navigator. Two of the five ships turned back. Magellan continued his journey with only three caravels. The three ships passed through the Straits of South America and joined the vast Pacific Ocean. For 18 months, those aboard suffered great thirst and hunger. How long is 18 months? That's a year and five months. Can you imagine living in a boat that long? The crew ran out of food. They were forced to eat biscuits swarming with worms and sawdust from wooden boards. Magellan's men wondered if they would ever live to see this land Magellan set out to discover. On March 16, 1521, Magellan reached the island of Samar. The next day, the vessels dropped anchor further south, off an island named Humunhon. Who can guess where Humunhon is? It's hard to find because it's a small island to the right. We mentioned earlier that Enrique was from Cebu. Can you guess where Cebu is? The crew rested there for a week, tending to the sick among them. Magellan expected Enrique to translate his words to the islanders, but the Cebuano could not understand the people of Samar, who spoke a different language called Waray. Magellan's ships then sailed southward, docking at the island of Limasawa later. A small native boat bearing eight men cautiously approached the ships. When Enrique spoke to them, he was at once understood. The next day, Magellan sent Enrique ashore to ask their chieftain for food and to say that they had come as friends, not as enemies. The king of Limasawa, Raja Kulambu, gave Magellan three jars full of rice and two large fish. In return, Magellan gave the Raja clothes made of fine cloth. He gave small knives and mirrors to the Raja's guards. Later, the Raja invited the Europeans to eat with him in his banana and palm leaf palace. Magellan found out that the richest and busiest port in the region was a place called Cebu. He set sail again and entered the port of Cebu on April 7, 1521. He and his men stayed there three weeks as the guests of Cebu's chieftain, Raja Humabon. Raja Humabon told Magellan, that the proud chieftain from the nearby island of Mactan refused to honor him as his leader. His name was Lapu Lapu. Should you refuse to accept Raja Humabon as your leader, you will be taught how sharp the Spanish lances are. Enrique returned with Lapu Lapu's answer. We have lances of our own with points hardened by fire. At midnight, Magellan left Cebu with 60 armed Spaniards and fleet as several hundred Cebuanos. They planned to attack the small island of Mactan under cover of darkness. They arrived at the Bay of Mactan three hours later. A coral reef ringed the bay Magellan's boats could go no further. They decided to wait till dawn. At dawn, the tide began to ebb. The Spaniards were forced to leave their long boats in water up to their waists. Raja Humabon offered his men to help. Magellan proudly refused. 
Magellan believed that one full-armed Spanish soldier could defeat a hundred natives. Some 50 Spanish soldiers waded slowly towards the Mactan shore. When they were within a bow shot of the beach, Magellan's men began firing. The Spaniards had expected a fight. Their surprise, some 1,500 armed warriors were waiting for them. The Spanish crew that remained on board frantically aimed their Lombards, small cannons, at the shore. But the enemy was beyond their range of their cannonballs. The soldiers could not reload their rifles in the water. Each time they tried, the sea water wet the matchlocks. The islanders also had wooden shields to protect them from the Spanish arrows. With shrill cries of defiance, the warriors of Mactan charged the enemy. They aimed their spears at the unprotected legs of Spaniards, who wore only breastplates and helmets of armor. One by one, the Spanish invaders fell. The two armies fought knee-deep in water. Magellan ordered his men to withdraw, but most fled in panic, sword in hand. Magellan stayed behind to cover their retreat. Some say Lapu-Lapu himself put an end to the great navigator's life. Magellan's brother-in-law took command of the rest of the Spanish crew. Earlier, Raja Humabon had promised to give jewels to the Spanish king as a gift. Now, Enrique was ordered to go to the Raja to collect the jewels. The new commander threatened to flog him if he did not obey. He told Enrique that although his master was dead, he was still a slave. Enrique went ashore with the commander's message. We don't know exactly what Enrique and the Raja talked about. But both men knew by now that the Spaniards had not come in peace. Enrique went back and told the Spaniards that Raja Humabon was inviting them to a banquet lunch. He said the Raja would give them the jewels he had promised. At least 20 Spaniards went ashore. All, except for a few who escaped, were killed by Humabon's men. After the slaughter, the last of Magellan's men left Cebu in a hurry. In Bohol, they burned one of the caravels because they had too few men to handle her. On their homeward voyage, the crew lost another ship, which foundered in the Spice Islands. Only one ship made it back to Spain. Do you remember this illustration? Magellan's voyage started out with five caravels. After the mutiny, only three ships proceeded on their journey. After the Battle of Mactan, on April 27, 1521, only one ship returned to Spain. In 1565, some 44 years after Magellan died, Another ship appeared on the Philippine horizon. On board was Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. The colonization of the Philippine Islands had begun. Miguel Lopez de Legazpi served as the first governor general of the Philippines. Before Magellan met Enrique, he had only traveled as far as Saba in northern Borneo. Since he died in Mactan, he never quite completed the full circumnavigation of the globe. A Spanish explorer, Sebastian del Cano, is said to have made the first continuous voyage around the Earth. But he finished the trip over a year after Enrique returned to Cebu in 1521. So, who was the first to sail around the world? 
we may never know for sure. Enrique did not set out to circle the earth. He never had a choice. After all, he was Magellan's servant. Chances are that Enrique was unaware of his own achievement. During his travels with Magellan, Enrique crossed oceans and continents and met many different people along the way. He saw more of the world than most people in his time. Now, he was back among his fellow islanders. He probably lived the rest of his life in the land of his birth. The first man, a Filipino, to travel around the globe. And that is the story of Enrique, who may have been the first around the globe. This story happened 500 years ago in 1521. In telling this story, we give tribute to the characters in this narrative who are actual people who have changed the course of history. It is important to remember these important events that have shaped who we are as Filipinos. Thank you, Renny Rojas and Mark Singer, for writing this book. We also love the illustrations by Arnel Mirasol. What have you learned with our story today? Let us know in the comment section. If you love this story, you can get a copy of the book at thehanonbooks.com. Thank you, Kuya Sig, and thank you also, Kuya Michael, for that interpretation. So we really look forward to checking your new learnings at our comment section below. You can always check on tahananbooks.ph for, for a copy of the book. And for our educators and parents, and also, of course, the kids, we, are, we have carefully selected the series of wonderful stories from the Tahanan Books Library. And throughout the year, we will be having Pagtulog na Nene. It's a Hiligay non Uyayi. So this will be sang. And we will put this up by the end of the month. We will also have Jose Rizal by the Halo Halo History Team. Ay nako for August. Sa, ang Mahabang Sampayan ni Nanay and Mang Andoy Signs will be on November and Celis Crocodile, which is about Araceli Limcaco Dance. This will be on December in time for her birthday. If you would like to look forward to the storytelling for these books, then definitely subscribe to our pages, either at Tahanan Books, Museo Pambata, Chinatown Museum, or Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art. For our viewers who are children at heart, the much older generation, we encourage you to join us for the succeeding Saturdays. We have March 13 and 20. This will be on the making of the biggest diorama on the Battle of Mactan. This is in cooperation with Sulu Garden Foundation and National Historical Commission of the Philippines. So we will be having our speakers on, like Dr. Danilo Herona, the historian on the Battle of Mactan. At the same time, the entire um, leading team of Sulu Garden Foundation. If you would like to collaborate with us, please give us, send us an email or give us a message at our Facebook page. We are also on Instagram. And our email is chinatownmuseumph at gmail.com. We will be opening sometime on April. That's very soon already. And uh, just, just um, keep watch on our Facebook page. So for Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art, we have already opened Hulot Gallery at the ground floor. Feel free to drop by. But for the second and third floors, we also plan to open it soon. You can get in touch with us at our Gmail, Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art at gmail.com or at our Facebook page, you could always message us. In behalf of Tahanan Books from uh, Fran Ong and Meg Rojas, as well as 
the Museo Pambata team. This is with Ms. Maricel Montero and teacher Noreen Parafina. Thank you so much for joining us this Storytelling Saturday. Bye!